Hey, Tony Lyons here with uh, another tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, match some CG to a some footage that is has flickering lighting situations. And so here I'm just simulating some random lighting uh, for white point and black point here. Um, so this would work great for situations where there's a, a lot of lightning or spark hits or any type of lighting change like a that's going on and then you have a CG element that uh, doesn't have that same lighting maybe it's flat maybe they just rendered out a single frame it could be could be for like a matte painting or something this could also be used for um, so we'll see that this this element here just isn't matching at all uh, right now and so there's actually really a quick and easy way to get that to match uh, rather fast and what we're gonna do is just sample the uh, white point and the black point uh, and get those color information and then we're going to apply them to the CG so first thing you want to do is crop this crop the area and uh, if you're using if you're using a plate you'll want to find the shadows we're gonna do the black point first so you want to find the shadows and usually in the plate you know it'll have a moving camera or something so you want to animate this little crop maybe it'd, it'd be moving around like so um, and then you end up with this guy uh, and then you want to click the reformat and that will make it uh, just so all that extra black information is gone and it's just the solid color which is pretty important so you don't accidentally uh, average together those black uh, pixels so we want to do a curve tool on this now so bring up a curve tool and it's set to average intensities by default so just go ahead and run it through the entire timeline and as you can see in the average intensity data uh, it is now animated and it has those intensities so let's just crop the white point out now and you'll f you'll want to find the kind of the white point I, I wouldn't call it the highlight uh, if you're going to say you're matching uh, a wall color to and the CG is something that's supposed to be that wall color then you want to sample that that area um, uh, not necessarily the highlight or the flare or anything but kinda like the average uh, the average white color of the wall the white point of it so let's just crop this really fast and I'm not gonna animate that one around click the reformat button and then bring up curve tools again and we wanna run it through okay so uh... it's very important to remember to uh... unpremult before you do any color corrections to your cg or else you'll get edge issues and other issues so we're gonna unpremult this object and you're going to do the white point first and i'll explain why in a moment uh, but connect a grade to it, and we want to first sample the white point of the CG, so like the average white area, so it would be this guy here. And uh, what that'll do is it will turn whatever color you just sampled to 100% white, as you can see the values here. It is now 1 uh, throughout. And then if you open up the, the gain, and you take the white points that we did, which is right here. If you take the intensity data from that curve tool and you hold the control down and you drag it over to the gain, let me take another look at this. And we'll pre mult it afterwards. Okay. Uh, so you want to do the color corrections in between the unpre mult and the pre mult. But as you can see, the information is now changing right along with that white point which is pretty awesome saves you a lot of time uh, manually animating and all that um, and what it's doing is it's just it's taking the first color that you sampled the white point turning that white and then the gain is actually saying hey let's turn that absolute white color into this new color and that new color just happens to be this animating color that you sampled from the plate and so now since that's about half the work now we just have to do the black point and the way I do the black point is I take a constant 
and uh, I take the intensity data from the black point that we sampled and just throw it into the constant so control drag over there and remember to hit this uh, four uh, to break it off into the different channels because if it's not four it's just one number throughout all of them and uh, now we have the R, G, and B differently. Uh, so now we have this constant just full of this one color and it's also animating. And um, a lot of people like the screen on their blacks which works pretty well but uh, I've learned that uh, if you just do a merge and you change it instead of screen you change it to high pot. It is kind of like a screen except it will change mostly just the blacks and I'll show you the difference in right now. Um, so as you, well as you can see it's already pretty much matched but let's just take a look at the screen versus the high pot. So if we screen it over you can see it, it, it will start adding to the white point and the white point was already perfect we already kinda we already kinda had that uh, in the right ballpark but with high pot uh, maybe I'll go to a different frame too just to, to bring it home so let's see if there's anyone that stands out this is probably fine so if we go back and we change to high pot, where are you? You see that it, it blends a little bit better. And it's up to your discretion. Uh, if the screen looks better, then use that. If the high pot looks, looks better, uh, use that. But basically, high pot controls mostly just the darks, a little bit better than the screen does. Like, it, it will not touch the, uh, the white. The further white it gets, the less it'll, it will affect it. And so that works really well for this, uh, this technique. And so, again, I want to stress that you should uh, pre-molt and unpre-molt, uh, because if you don't, it kind of gets a little jacked up. And so, so yeah, so let's just play this through. Oops. So as you can see, uh, really quickly, we were able to just match something that was just completely bland, had no animation, to a plate that was chaotic and completely random and so this will work I know this example is you know just some spheres <laughs> with uh, with some basic colors but this will work on plates and it will work with uh, CG elements and it is a really nice way oh um, let me just go over real quick you it's it's probably better to to do the black point underneath it's like the last thing that you should do and it should be separate. You don't want to do this inside of this grade. I think you should keep the black point separate so that if your creative director says, hey, you know what, we want that object to actually be a little more blue, then you can make that blue, but then the black point doesn't change at all. You're not actually uh, changing the black point, just the white point. And so let's say he wants you to make it darker as well, so you just go down, and you know, you can really you can really change the white point completely separate from the black point with uh, with some peace in mind that with some peace in mind that the black point is always going to be the same like once you get the black point it's nailed down you never have to go back and touch it again it's at the bottom and just just leave it alone and then you can adjust the white point uh, however you want so that that really helps, um, and the key to that is just to keep it keep it separate and keep it at the bottom, and then everything above it, as you can see, you can edit the white point with, and just get just get that looking good. And so this, yeah, this is just the tutorial. I really hope it helps. Um, it's something that I didn't know until a lot later, and I wish I, there's so many situations where I had to animate by hand, where you just you just don't have to. And I uh, hope you really enjoyed it. So this is Tony Lyons, and I'll see you next time.